Welcome back to another edition of the Net Report Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie O'Leary. We have a lot to talk about today. Uh, a lot of stuff happened this weekend, Rutgers related. Uh, obviously, we got a commitment this weekend on the football side from 2025 DB Rennick Derillis, who was uh, previously at Union High School. He's now at Don Bosco. We have half a dozen updates in the transfer portal uh, for Rutgers basketball along with Joe harris Simiak speaking this past weekend and other recruits on campus. It was a big recruiting weekend for football on Saturday, so we'll have all that. Uh, but first, the presenting sponsor of the Night Report podcast is Night and Day Apparel, calling all Rutgers students, alumni, and fans. Are you looking for new and unique Rutgers merchandise? Night and Day Apparel has you covered from t-shirts and hoodies to drinkware and pet accessories. Night and Day focuses on providing the Rutgers community with exclusive one-of-a-kind tailgating products. Be sure to check out the links in today's podcast description <clears throat> below uh, to their website and social media so you can stay on top of everything night and day, including new merch drops and promotional materials. Shop now and keep chopping. I need to bring this up. They just restocked it. If you have oh, a yeah. pool, you got to get this float. I, I don't know if I should share the screen because we have like upload issues, but I'm going to do it anyway. Screw it. Um, <laughs> where is it? There it is. Chrome tab, Chrome tab. Look at this bad boy. How can you not want that? That is pretty cool. You want that floating around your pool? A nice summer day. That is I'm pretty sick. Saying, it's, it's pretty sick. And 90 bucks, not the worst in the world. Look, look at that. Just it, Such a nice like little accent off the blue pool. <laughs> so, <laughs> Love that. I would go get yours today and use, the, use that promo code Rockers Rivals. You get 10% off. So save yourself a couple bucks. Absolutely. And with summer just around the corner, you need to restock on some of those things. Um, uh, of course. But we also are sponsored by the Cut app. Uh, as you know, we've sponsored with Cut, the social betting platform. It is a peer-to-peer -peer social betting platform that allows you to directly bet against your buddies and other fans. That's right. You can bet against us, the TKR crew, on Cut today. Uh, and bet on your favorite sports, pop culture, top uh, political topics, whatever you're kind of into. They have a lot of different things you can, you can make. You can also make your own uh, custom bets. It's the ultimate place to put your money and uh, put your money where your mouth is, and it's legal in 40 plus states. Uh, you could also follow them at, at Cut at, uh, at Cut Bet on all your social media channels and download the app via the App Store or Cut.com. If you use the co uh, promo code Believe Rutgers, that's B L E A V Rutgers, you get a 10% uh, deposit bonus when you sign up. All right, let's hop right into the latest commitment for the football program, Rennick Derillis. He is, uh, I think he's a 5'11", 160 pound DB. Previously, mm -hmm. like I said, at Union High School, he just transferred to Don Bosco Prep. His nickname is Stretch, so Stretch Derillis. What can you tell us about this kid? I know you put in a future cast a long time ago for this kid, so shouldn't yeah. have surprised anybody that he ended up at Rutgers. Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a minute. So he he was down to uh, Rutgers in Tennessee technically um, back in January, um, but he released the top five instead. And uh, some kids do that; they they have top five lists and stuff like that. But uh, Tennessee made a serious push here, and Rutgers beat him out flat. Beat, Rutgers flat out beat them out. Um, <clears throat> he's a Union kid since 2000. I think I put it in the article since uh, what was it? Since 2007, there were seven D1 prospects out of Union High School. Six of them have went to Rutgers. The one and all seven were committed to Rutgers. At one yes, point. yeah, I was going to say that. Um, oh, sorry. They did end up, <laughs> no, no, you're good. They did end up losing David Igbenosin, um, who's now at Ohio State, I think. Yeah, he went from yep. uh, Ole Miss to Ohio State. So um, that one hurt a little bit, stung a little bit for Rutgers. But this kid's pretty good. Top ten prospect. Now he's playing at Don Bosco Prep. Um, does a little bit of everything for his high school team. Now he's an athlete, but he's going to be a cornerback at the next level. He's very skinny. Um, 5'11", 170 is what he's says he's listed at. I, I'm going to say he's 5'11", like 160. Um, he needs to put on some weight, significant weight. And when he early enrolls, that's going to help him a lot. Um, body or built by Butler is the hashtag. So I'm sure Jay Butler will have a field day working with him and putting on uh, the pounds. But, um, yeah, he, he threw a pass last year. He ran the ball 19 times, hauled in 35 receptions. Uh, five touchdowns, 500 receiving yards, uh, 41 tackles, two tackles for loss. Or not, no, not two tackles for loss. That's wrong. I didn't update that. Um, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, two interceptions, one of which was for a touchdown. Like the kid does a little bit of everything. He's your tall, lengthy corner um, that Shiano likes. He's got really long arms. Um, there's, there's nothing, uh, really good closing speed. It's pretty physical for his size too. 
and um, he, he, he does use that to his advantage, which is nice. Um, cause you, you would figure at 160 pounds, he's not going to be too physical, but, but he is, um, really good tape, top 10 kid in state, high upside, 5.73 star borderline four star. Like he's, this is like a really, really good get for Rutgers. And, uh, it just keeps building on this, uh, this pretty solid recruiting class that has a, what, four commits now. So yeah, well, nice little solid start there. Three of which are from Jersey. Yeah. You love to see the Jersey connections because I mean, last year, widely re- widely regarded as a pretty down year in Jersey, but 25 is one of the better years in recent memory. So expect Rutgers to be much more involved with this class than they were last year in Jersey. Oh yeah. Um, what's the story behind him transferring to Don Bosco? Is there anything there that Rutgers fans should be concerned about? Or is it no, just, you know, just I, another kid transferring? Just uh, mostly just another kid transferring. Um, he's going to early enroll. So um, when you go up to those, those prep schools, that definitely helps a little bit, makes the process a little easier for um, admissions and all that other stuff. Uh, but no, no issues there at all academically. Smart kid, uh, really good prospect. And you get to play some better competition too. Um, that's not a knock on Union, who's usually pretty solid when it comes to developing guys, but it's just more so the, the, the big north is the big north at the end of the day. Um, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to see kind of uh, who, how he's going to fare against this uh, – a little bit step up in comp so um yeah i mean they get other stuff too like the prep schools have like better weight rooms and stuff like that they have more coaches sure. dedicated to football like it's just it's just how it works so yeah this is uh this is exciting and you, you said it before but the fact that he's a uh, the, the 2025 class in new jersey is the deepest class i think i've ever seen in my life um i've been covering it football for 11 years now or recruiting at least um 11 10 years 12 years something like that um but this is the deepest New Jersey class I've ever seen. Um, I can't speak for my time before that, but this, it, it's like, we're at 60 something prospects that have power five offers. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty high praise. Uh, you've recently celebrated your sixth anniversary of running the site today. So congratulations yeah. to you on that. But to say that it's the deepest you've ever seen, uh, that's saying something. So yeah, stay tuned because uh, speaking of the class in general, uh, Rutgers had a pretty big contingent of recruits on campus for Saturday's practice. Tell us a little bit about who was on campus, some early reactions, guys that you thought uh, came out of the trip with a really high opinion of Rutgers. Yeah, so um, it's it was a really deep list. Um, now, Keanu Johnson, wide receiver, 2025, I'm keeping an eye on. He has an official visit for June as well. Uh, just another trip to campus. I think he visited in January, too, for a basketball game. I want to say it was the Purdue game, but I don't remember which game it was exactly. Um, got his offer after that that visit in January, and then he's, he's really been big on the Big Ten. Um, Big Ten football is huge to him. He loves the idea of playing in the, at the next, at the highest of high levels. Uh, so he's one to keep a close eye on. I'm close to a future cast with him, but not just yet. Um, Jaden Elijah commit Talibi 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 Kaba. Jeez, I can't talk. Uh, the two commits that are uh, both pretty solid. It's good to get Elijah back on campus because there were some rumors swirling that he might be looking around a little bit. But um, getting him back on campus, getting him back in the fold, it seems like uh, pretty good. Eden Buchanan, uh, 2025 offensive lineman. We actually submitted a future cast right after his visit. I um, was able to talk to him a little bit. Good Council High School, a school that produces at a high rate down in Maryland. Um, he's also considering West Virginia. Now he has official visits to Rutgers and West Virginia for June. Um, so keep an eye on those two. I think Rutgers should be able to seal the deal following that visit. Uh, but you never know. Um, who else? Who else? Maxwell Roy four-star defensive tackle out of St. Joe's prep. He likes Rutgers a lot. He's been there quite a bit. I still think he's probably going to go elsewhere. I know Ohio State's making a nice little push for him. Um, I forget the, the other top schools in his list, but he's got like every offer basically known the man. So it's going to be a tough one, tough haul. Uh, Renick Dorillis obviously committed after the visit. And then Tariq Hayer out of uh, St. John's College down in Maryland. That a four-star safety, I think we have him severely underrated, and that's saying something when he's already a four-star. Yeah, um, yeah, I think he should be in the rivals 250 for sure, and he probably will in the next update if I had to guess. Um, but he's just he scheduled the Rutgers official visit right afterwards, after this unofficial. So it kind of tells you where they sit now. Cincinnati's pushing, Maryland's pushing. I was told it's going to be a little bit nil involved in this one if you want to land him. So we'll see if Rutgers can uh, can pony up and get him. 
Yeah, a big list there. Did you mention the uh, the kid from Tampa Bay Tech that kind of visited out oh, of nowhere too? No, I completely forgot about him. How how do I forget about the number twenty seven overall prospect in the country? Um, <laughs> yeah, Dallas Wilson, wide receiver, Tampa Bay Tech, uh, came on a visit uh, Saturday. He's uh, he plays on he plays in the OT seven. So if you don't know what OT seven is, it's like a seven on seven league, essentially the new version of AAU. Um, it's like the EYBL basically. Uh, but it, yeah, they have like, I think they have like 40 teams or something like that. Travel wow. all across the country, plays for Miami raw. Now, if you've heard me say Miami raw 7v7 before you have probably, um, because Corey Duff, uh, played for them last year. So he's one to keep a close eye on. He's close with Duff. I was told they both obviously wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, now I, Rutgers hasn't technically offered Dallas Wilson yet. He is also committed to Oregon. He's been committed there since January 2023. However, that has not stopped him from taking visits as he just visited Miami in January. Um, he has an official to Florida in uh, June. I think he also visited – who else did he visit? Someone else. I can't remember who it was. He visited somewhere else last year. Um, but, yeah, now this kid is 27 overall in the country. Like, he's probably – I can't say probably. He more than likely will be a five star, I guess. Uh, if just based on his ranking alone, um, maybe he has to jump like a couple spots to be a five star. But this is like a borderline five star kid, and Rutgers got him to campus, so that's that's just huge. Yeah, no, I mean, even if he is only coming up uh, just to check things out, I mean, mm-hmm. for a kid to be ranked that highly checking out campus on his own dime. And it's not like his whole team was here. It wasn't just mm-hmm. like some team trip that you see sometimes. That is uh, something to file away for sure. Uh, and also yeah. obviously Shiano is cleaned up in the Tampa Bay area recently. I don't <laughs> know if Tampa Bay Tech is coached by somebody Shiano has a cr- close relationship with, but. Uh, they, they did land a Tampa Bay Tech kid. Uh, I forget who it was, or there was a Tampa Bay Tech kid a couple years ago. I remember that was a big name. Um, they, they do produce a lot though. So it, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, the last thing I had on football, obviously, um, the uh, football spring schedule will continue. It's going to be a practice every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday mm-hmm. for the rest of the year, or the rest of the month, I should say. Uh, this week, obviously, weather doesn't look great, uh, so they'll be probably practicing in the bubble, so you'll be able to yeah. be there to check out some more <laughs> stretching. Uh, but on Saturday, they will have a scrimmage, and the weather – I think it's supposed to be a little nicer. Uh, just tell us about so. kind of the, the rest of the week uh, football recruit or football spring practice was. Yeah, uh, real quick, going back to the Tampa Bay Tech. Uh, Henry Hughes, Tampa Bay Tech. I knew there was one. Uh, okay. Yeah, so Henry Hughes went to Tampa Bay Tech. So the, I guess a little bit of a connection there as well. So they are familiar with the program. But uh, besides the point, uh, this week, I forget who we get this week. Uh, oh, Pat Flaherty. We get Pat Flaherty this week. Oh, nice. Yeah, so uh, we get to talk to him. I don't think we've actually ever talked to him before, if I had to guess. Um, did we talk to him last year? Maybe we did. Yeah, we did in spring practice. Um, so we get to talk to him. That's going to be fun. Um, I don't know who the other two coaches or other coach is because Saturday will probably be Shiano following the, um, the scrimmage. But, uh, yeah, a couple players this week we'll probably get. I put in requests for some guys. I want I really want to talk to Malcolm Ray, so hopefully we get him, but uh, won't know until tomorrow. And then uh, who else did I put in? Someone else, too. I forget. Uh, where's this list? I also put in for Sam Brown. I want to talk to Sam Brown about, mm. his, uh, about his past and the history and the injury history and all that and then how he kind of bounced back in the Prince Stripe Bowl and, how he could kind of be like a one-two punch with uh, Mananga and all that good stuff. So we'll wait and see if we get those approved or not. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Just another normal week of spring practice. In the bubble sucks because the bubble just sucks. <laughs> yeah, not ideal by any means. But no. um be cool to actually see some real game action on Saturday for a scrimmage. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, not that you'd be excited. able to say much on it. but uh, no, probably not. But we can yeah. – Read the tea leaves when you get the Shiano press conference. Yep, definitely. Um, the last mm-hmm. Rutgers uh, football related thing I have is Jer- Joe Harry Simiak spoke on Saturday in his presser. I thought he said a lot of interesting things. He's just a very engaging guy in general. Mm-hmm. Um, never yeah. uh, is without substance when he's on the mic. Not that you know Shiano gives his assistants many opportunities to do that. 
But uh, I thought he had a lot of really interesting nuggets that came out of his uh, his presser. What did you find interesting that Harrison Miak said on Saturday? I mean, the Kaz Sanders thing was the most interesting. I know specifically asked about Kaz Sanders, but he did rave about him quite a bit. Um, yep. He's he's just a, a really freak athlete. Now, I don't think he's going to play much this year. Maybe special teams, if I had to guess. But um, similar role to like a – I'd say like a Sage Claudius type, um, where you get a lot of special teams reps, and then next year you you go in a, you're on a two deep probably, if I had to guess. Especially because Loyal will be leaving, Dixon will be leaving, uh, I think Igbenosin will be leaving too. So you'll have a lot of openings next year, um, and he can kind of play that Igbenosin role. I feel like where it's almost like a slot corner, but you're really not. Um, you're still a safety, quote unquote. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think he can move him around a bit, and uh, he'll just keep putting on weight. But he—that was uh, probably the biggest takeaway from that. But uh, he just speaks really well. He's—we were speculating about this in the media room the other day. Like, Shano's what? How old is he? Sixty-three? No, uh, fifty-seven. Sean, yeah, I was gonna say I don't think he's even sixty yet. Yeah, fifty-seven. I mean, people speculate on the boards like, <laughs> who's gonna be here in eight years? Pike or Shiano, and it's like. If you're Harris Simiak, do you kind of just wait it out and just like you could be a head coach in waiting? I know it's not in his contract right now, technically, but it's I don't makes yeah, a lot of that, sense. That really never really seems to work out. Like if well, you think true. of famous uh, head coach in waiting, I know that uh, Will Muschamp famously was a head coach in waiting at one point, mm -hmm. um, and then he bolted uh, for Florida, I think. Yeah, he was at Texas. Um, <clears throat> Another one's escaping me. I think Lincoln Mar Riley was named head coach in waiting. Either he was or, you know, after Stoops retired, it was like immediately installing Riley. I don't know. I, I, I just don't think that's traditionally worked out because, I mean, let's be honest. If, if Rutgers has a really good year this year, like we expect them to, mm -hmm. Harris Simiak is going to have head coaching opportunities. Yeah, I do think that the biggest caveat now is that these head coaching opportunities at the <clears throat> – uh g5 g5 level are like not attractive at all or at least nowhere near as attractive as they used to be simply because you're fighting just an even harder battle with these programs because you don't have the resources that they have like you previously didn't have the facilities and that was a big draw but at least you could offer playing time now if you don't have the facilities or the nil packages to offer these kids you're, you're at such a big disadvantage where you're seeing guys make decisions where they know that they're not coming in with any kind of role promised to them, but because mm -hmm. of the money they're getting offered, it's too much to, to turn down. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the more I think about it too, he did interview at several spots this off season. So it's like, yes. Yeah. Yep. So never mind. Forget I said anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not, not to shoot your idea down. I just think it's, uh, just tell me, I, I think it'd be hard to wrong. keep them around for like another, even five years. Who Honestly. knows? Maybe maybe next year. Like, you never know. Like you said, yeah. they get eight wins, eight plus wins. And you're looking at offers from, hey, Minnesota might open up and they have a DC yeah. on contract already that you know. Yeah. Specu we do. Speculating, yeah. but you never know. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of all we got on the football side. Let's transition to basketball. We got a very interesting Smoke Williamson boom tweet this morning. The last time he boomed, it was about Malik Ewan, uh, which we all know kind of you know, mm -hmm. ended up not materializing, but not necessarily because of anything Rutgers did. The boom tweet, uh, we kind of knew what was going on behind the scenes. We weren't really <laughs> supposed to be talking about it uh, until mm -hmm. Charlie Donovan dropped it and then became public. So the boom tweet is about Tyson Acuff. And if that's name that sounds familiar it is because it is Darius Acuff the five-star player out of 2025's cousin mm -hmm. Darius Acuff was the eighth leading scorer in the nation last year at Eastern Michigan he averaged almost 22 points a game uh this is a guy who certainly can go get a bucket he was kind of the only guy in his team last year though what are you hearing about the Tyson Acuff situation um, Troy Donovan basically hinted at it uh he said Rutgers is I shouldn't say hinted at it he, he did say it he said Rutgers is the favorite um and it's it sounds like that's uh that's true. So we'll we'll wait and see what happens. Um, if they can lock him up, but I mean, Smoke Williamson with the tweet, it all kind of there's when there's smoke, there's fire, haha. <laughs> um, so yeah, oh, I mean, it it wouldn't shock me if this ends up happening. Now, he's eighth leading scorer, uh, max leading scorer. Like he he could he could score obviously. Um, sure. and this was the worst offensive team 
in high major basketball. I have to repeat that every time we do a pod because people just don't understand that the worst scoring team in basketball. You're talking about basically. Rutgers here, not yes. talking about – yes, yes, yes. No, not uh, Eastern Michigan, although they were pretty bad in general. But, uh, yeah, so I think he – personally, I'm just looking at him, watch his tape this morning. Uh, I think he's a, uh, a six-man, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, now you're probably sitting there like 20 points per game, six man. And he does have some flaws. His defense is, is questionable. He does average over two turnovers a game, which is an issue. But if I, I think we set it off the pod, um, you said it specifically, uh, what was it like against high, high major teams or quality opponents? He doesn't turn it over as much or something. So he played three, uh, opponents this year that were in the top 100 of, uh, Bart Torvik's rankings and his mm-hmm. turnover percentage is only 5%, which is really good. His usage rate, I mean, on the season was 30% against the top 100 quality teams. He had a usage rate of 32 percent um obviously he was a guy that eastern michigan relied on really heavily Mm -hmm. this year he was the only player on eastern michigan's squad that played at least two-thirds of the team's minutes this year and he played 84 percent of the minutes so he just didn't really sit when he was playing Mm -hmm. Uh, and every time they went down the court on offense he was either you know taking the shot or dishing it out um I think he took a lot of really tough shots this year because he had to. He only shot 29% from three after he shot uh, 34%, I believe, in 2022-23. Um, But he is a really good free throw shooter. He's a career 81% shooter from the line. So typically uh, when when scouts are looking at a guy uh, for upside in terms of becoming a better shooter. They look at free throw percentage and usually mm-hmm. use that as a proxy to determine if they could improve their three point shooting. So 81% from the line tells me that he could probably be significantly better than he was uh, from deep this year. Um, so I, I think in an off ball role, um, he could certainly be uh, like from a pick and pop shooting standpoint, a much better, I think he'd be a better, I think he could be closer to a 40% from three than 30% which he was this year. Yeah. Um, can create his own shot too, which I mean, yep. can't stress this enough. Most of these guys last year could not. Um, yep. That's huge. Can score at the rim, 66% field goal percentage when, when uh, at, at the rim, 29% of those are uh, out of all his attempts this past year, 29% of all his attempts were at the rim. And like you said, a good free throw shooter. So it makes sense. You get, get hacked you're gonna get hacked i mean in a big town especially maybe not against yep. Edie because Edie gets every call but um but yeah no it's uh he's a good passer he's a good scorer like you can't really ask for much more now like i said the turnovers are a little concerning the defense is probably the more concerning part because you don't really know how good he is on the on the defensive end but if anyone can mold a player into a good defensive player it would be steve peichel and crew um can't stress that one enough so they need buckets. Yeah. That's the name of the game now. You got to score. You got to score significant points, and um, this is going to help if they get. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think the biggest thing that makes me feel better about his defense is he did play just so many minutes <clears throat> this year compared to his teammates that mm-hmm. he was just gas probably. Um, yeah. That's not to say he would be like an, an above average defender if he was playing, you know, twenty five minutes versus you know thirty plus or whatever he's at. I think yeah. He played like 35 minutes a game this year. That's not to say you'd be a significantly better defender, but if he's playing on a bad team, which he did this year, and he's having to shoulder basically the entire offensive burden, it's going to affect your your ability to play good defense. I think mm-hmm. last year is probably a better indicator of what he could be at Rutgers this year. Um, last year, I, I don't know how they did this. Eastern Michigan had Imani Bates, who's now in the NBA. He was you know the Uber recruit out of Michigan. He spent mm-hmm. a year at Memphis and ended up transferring to Eastern Michigan. And they had Noah Farrakhan. So they had Farrakhan, they had Imani Bates, and they had Eastern Michigan, and they had yeah. uh, Derek Tyson Acup. Somehow they went 8-23 and 23 in the MAC with those three guys. I don't I know how you do that. Fire that coach, right? <laughs> you have to. <laughs> that's, that's unbelievable to me that they were that bad with those three guys. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it, Tyson Acuff was a much better shooter last year percentage-wise. Um, playing more of a, an off-the-ball role. His usage rate was 20% last year as opposed to 30% this year. Um, so I, th- I think he's played in a you know a, a, a 1B, 1C type situation with mm-hmm. other top players, which is a good thing because you kind of get to see how he would react to that. So I think 
in a situation where he's either the you know a starter in a three guard lineup or the sixth man off the bench, uh, I think this is about as good of a player you could ask for in that kind of role, which is a uh, you know a scorer who can make his own shot. He's a proven guy. You know, you we're this is the eighth leading scorer in the NCAA this past season. Anybody mm-hmm. who has a problem with this kid ending up at Rutgers is kind of deranged in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> pretty spot on there. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just crazy. Like you need scoring, you need scoring. And not only does this help with the scoring, but he, he can do other things too. Like he's just a decent player. And if he's not starting he's to, better than but, decent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like if you can get him as a six man, you take him every day of the week. I can't stress yeah. enough. Offense is the name of the game now. You have no choice anymore. You have to score buckets. Um, now, like I said, his defense is questionable, but Pike will, will handle that. That'll be fine. This is a good get. Plus, he's got connections. Yeah. He's, he's cousins with Darius Acuff. So, yeah. as long as this happens, which uh, it seems like Troy kind of hinted that it, 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 they're the favorite. So, I feel like if it was official, Troy would have said it was official, but... Um, I'm trying to find the max leading scorer last year to like do a. No, the max leading yeah. scorer was a senior last year. That sucks. Um, so last last year, if you look at and another, there's two things that I, I kind of wanted to, to hit on before we move on to other stuff. He's his size. He's got legitimate size as a guard for, mm-hmm. for the Big Ten. He's listed at six four. I think one ninety. That's huge. Yeah. Which you know, it, if it, if a guy is, you know, scoring twenty two points a game in the MAC and he's you know listed at 5'11 or something like that. That'd be one mm-hmm. thing, but he's listed at 6'4", so he's got legit size. Last year when he was playing like a bat or a Robin role to the uh, the Batman of the Monty Bates, his effective field goal percentage was 55.2%. His true shooting percentage was 587 This year, his effective field goal percentage was 47.8 and 518 true shooting. So I do think you'll see his numbers take a healthy bounce upwards when he's playing more of a secondary option role rather than mm-hmm. having to, to be the guy for, for an entire offensive uh, team. So here's an interesting point. Um, Toledo's leading scorer in 2022, 2023, he was the number two leading scorer in the MAC um, that year or last season or 20 previous season, whatever. He had 19 and a half. This year he's at Baylor. He averaged 13 and a half. Similar numbers shooting wise. Um, Put up similar numbers in almost every category, actually. Put up better numbers with assists, similar rebounds, similar steals, similar everything. So, I mean, if you can get like 13, 14 points per game out of this kid, that's that's huge. Considering yep. Ace is probably going to average, I would say, around the 20 mark. Dylan's probably going to average around 15 to 17 at least, if not more. Um, it's on the points per game? Yeah. They're more. Cool. They're probably more. I'm probably shooting under, but. No, I, I'm, I'm saying I'd be surprised if Ace scores 20 points a game. I mean, it's think so? just very think lofty. Might. He's going to shoot a lot. He's going to shoot a lot, but you also got to realize <clears throat> this is, you know, a Rutgers offense here. They're That's not true. known for, you know, their <laughs> offensive prowess. Not saying that we won't take a big step forward with better talent next year, but I think projecting anybody for 20 points a game is, is a little lofty. Um, yeah, but... I'm optimistic here with this. I think people are going to be uh, a little shocked. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm just being cautiously optimistic next year, uh, not fair. to put too much expectations on 17 and eight year old, 18 year olds um, playing in the Big Ten. But, Perfectly fair. Um, let's uh, let's go on to <clears throat> some additional players who aren't 17 or 18. Let's kind of do a rundown of the latest on a bunch of different portal targets, uh, starting with the Princeton duo. They will be taking official visits this mm-hmm. weekend at Rutgers, starting Friday. Uh, Zach Martini and Matt Alaco. Where do you? stand uh where do you think Rutgers stands with both of those guys can we even possibly maybe see them wrap up their recruitments this weekend um it sounds optimistically now mind you um before we go too far off the of acuff even if they get acuff they're still in the market for another guard yes like there's, yep. there's plenty of room there's four probably five ships that are open on this team um because <clears throat> we're still waiting on the one announcement but uh, yeah, no, they're, they're definitely still in the market for other players. Uh, Martini would help a ton. Like I said, a great shooter four man. We've been talking about him. He was on campus Thursday, Thursday, I think for an unofficial. Now he's coming back a week after. Come on, let's be honest. We all know what, what's going on here. It's probably only a matter of, uh, when, not if for him. Now, Alaco is a little bit of a different situation. He was supposed to visit last weekend or last week with Martini, but went home for Easter instead. Uh, now he's going to visit this weekend. It sounds like, and 
I think that's your starter right there if you get him. Um, but yeah, no, I, it sounds like Rutgers is pretty optimistic. Uh, is looking pretty optimistic f- to land both of those kids. You land those two, you land um, a cuff, <clears throat> land a transfer big. Now you're talking with you're you're playing with fire now. Now you got some weapons. Um, not only can like Ace Ace score, Dylan can score. You got a guy that's the eighth nation's eighth leading scorer. You get a Laco who's pretty damn good at scoring. Martini can hit from deep when when needs to be. He scored double digits over like I think eight or nine times. I don't know more than that. Ten plus times this year. Um, so now now you're playing with some offensive firepower if you can land all three of those guys. But uh, it does sound pretty good so far with Martini and Alaco. We'll just have to wait and see till the the weekend probably, or maybe even Monday, because those those visits tend to take a day after or two to collect your thoughts and then make your decision. Unless you're Ace Bailey, then the game's over and you're like, hey, I'm committing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but obviously it's, it's a good thing. The staff I know feels very confident in landing both those guys as well. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. So it be interesting to see uh, how things shape up because <clears throat> for some strange reason, we were talking about this off the pod, there is a, uh, what's it called? There's a dead period coming up for, for college basketball recruiting, which yep. you wouldn't think would happen right in the middle of uh, the portal season, but it is. Um, that is, I believe, the week of uh, the 7th of April. Mm-hmm. But so it's good well, to get I mean, guys in before the, the, the dead period. The so portal's open during the final four. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, it's insane. Um, let's run through some guys now that Rutgers has. Uh, we've confirmed Rutgers is showing interest in. Uh, first, let's start with Zach Laput. He is the D2 guard out of uh, Connecticut. I don't remember the exact school. Uh, where do Ru- things stand with him and Rutgers? And is this a guy that Rutgers is, is uh, kind of pushing for? They're not really pushing. It's more so just early interest. They cast in a pretty wide net um, for guys. You, you see it now. Like, just go on our portal thread. There's, like, seven guards. There's, like, a couple forwards. There's a couple big men. Like, they're just casting a wide net. They're reaching out. Um, so Mike Larkin, their special assistant to the head coach. I forget his exact role or whatever it is. He might be assistant coach now because you can have five of them. Um, but, yes, he uh, he reached out. He used to coach in that league, in the D2 league over there. So it makes sense. He knows his game, knows – and those people down there. So I'm assuming one of them just reached out and was like, Hey, you got to check this kid out. Reached out to him, said, what's up. He now he's supposed to have a coach, a call with coach Peichel sometime this week. I think Rutgers has a little bit of interest. I don't think it's super serious because if you land, say a cuff, you land uh, a Laco, you're, pr- you're probably done with guard. Now this could be like a lower down the list option. I'd still even probably look into bringing this guy. If you're going to run three guard lineups, bring him in. It can't hurt. Like the guy can score, shoots 40% from three, 46 from the field. Like he's pretty good in D2 level or not. Like you could, if you're shooting at that level and hitting, like you can hit at just about any level, maybe just be a spot up guy. Maybe just be the backup dude for the most part. Hey, you want to go make a run at the final four with us? Come on, like hop on board. It's it's the Rutgers bus driven by Andy Katz. Just <laughs> grab a seat. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, we're casting a wide net, like you said. Um, this kid, I think, is getting a lot of hate on the Rutgers uh, fan side because he is D2. But, I mean, if you just look at some of the top teams in the country, they landed D2 kids and they're impact players. You look at Washington State. You look at Colorado State. You look at, uh, obviously, you know, Golke with, uh, with Oakland this year. Mm-hmm. There was, I think, five or six uh, – NCAA tournament teams that took a D2 guy this past year and was an impact player for their for their roster. I also think you have to think of, you know, with how high school prospects end up at different schools now, you know, I think there's probably been about a 30% drop off with the amount of scholarships given out to high school students mm-hmm. in D- D1 basketball, if not higher, oh, because yeah. those guys are now getting scholarships to transfer portal guys. So the guys who would typically be like the last scholarship given out to a D1 basketball player are now going to, you know, the lower levels. So these, Mm -hmm. there's never been more talent at the D2 or D3 level than there is right now because of this. So I think you have to keep that in mind where guys are slipping through the cracks now more often because their scholarships aren't available out of high school. Yeah. Um, Some people are like, they see the lists too. It's like Furman and random schools. I forget George Washington, Davidson. Um, yeah, he's probably a starter for most of those schools. Like Louisville reached out 
do we want to talk about that? Like people are complaining about Martini and then Maryland reached out and everyone's like, Oh, we, we got to get them. We got to get them now. It's like, yeah. Oh, now everyone wants them. Now it's like shiny new toy. I want that. Like, exactly. You didn't, didn't like him when the tape was there though. And he was pretty good. And yeah, nothing has changed <laughs> about this guy other than who's now showing interest. So, yep. um, it's, speaking it's of another guy, Rutgers is showing interest in though, Ruben Shinyelu. He is a big man out of Washington state. And if you're saying to yourself, that name sounds familiar, it's because Rutgers finished second in his recruitment a year ago. He mm-hmm. has entered the transfer portal. What are you hearing about Ruben Shinyelu? So Ruben actually worked with the same guys over in Africa that um, Emmanuel Ogbo worked with. Um, I have a couple feelers out to see what the, what the scoop is with him, but uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where he ends up. I know Rutgers is definitely very interested again. It makes sense. He's a very good prospect. Uh, he didn't play a ton of minutes. He was a four-star, but he didn't play a ton of minutes. Um, so we'll wait and see what happens there. But um, I, I think they have a, a decent shot there. I think they're definitely – like the Amari Williams situation is going to be tough, I feel like, to, for them to yep. land him. So you have to start looking at other avenues, and this is this is one of those guys. Yeah, for me, <clears throat> this Chinelu is still a very raw, raw player. He only played 14 minutes a game this year for Washington State. Uh, he averaged five points a game, five rebounds a game, one and a half <laughs> blocks a game, uh, but he also averaged 2.2 fouls per game. And That's the this is all in just 14 minutes a game. So obviously, some of the numbers, like the rebounding numbers and the block numbers, are gaudy. Those are really positive signs, but 2.2 fouls a game just shows that he doesn't fully. Uh, he hasn't fully mastered defensive basketball. Um, if you remember early in Cliff's career, he had a ton of games where he was in foul trouble early. Sounds similar to Chini Um mm-hmm. Certainly be love to have him as a developmental guy, but I don't think you can necessarily rely on him to be your starting big next year outside of some kind of transformation in the offseason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Um, I think you still need to get someone with like a ton of experience, but that's just, that's just me. Totally agree. Um, Another guy who doesn't have a ton of experience, who Rutgers has previously shown interest in as a high school recruit and now is showing interest in once again, now he's in the portal, Mm -hmm. is Gus Mm -hmm. Yeldon, the big out of Wisconsin, who we previously, I think, discussed. Uh, His nickname was Baby Jokic. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing about Gus Yeldon? Yeah, so they're definitely interested in in him again. Um, It's going to be intriguing to see who else kind of shows interest because he did redshirt this past season. Uh, I believe they have a starting big man I can't remember his name. And then they bring in a, they brought in a transfer, I thought, or something. I forget why. There was a reason behind his red shirt. I forget the exact reasoning. Um, yeah, the kid from Minnesota. Uh, Crowell. So Crowell was there. Um, he's a junior. He still has another year. So it sounds like Gus is just trying to get out and trying to get some playing time. Um, now, I'm intrigued to see how he fits. He has really good passing skills. He has a really good offensive skill set. Um can he run up and down the court with with these guys? I don't I don't know, but I think his skill set, offensively at least, is enough that you have to at least peek into him and see like if you could uh, mold him into something special. Um, he's a little undersized. I think he's six eight or six nine, but he's got the weight to him. I forget how uh, how much weight he has to him, but um, yeah, he's been trying to reshape his body at Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota at Wisconsin, it sounds like he's six nine two forty five listed. So. Um, they'll reach out, but again, I, I, I still think you need someone with experience. That's the biggest issue. Yes, you definitely, uh, need an experienced big <clears throat> to anchor posts for them because you're kind of, your expectations are all dumped into next year and you can't just hope a guy develops mm-hmm. um, like we've previously talked about. Oh, um, um, well, I think a cuff just became official. Okay. Some breaking news on the pod. Where yeah. are you seeing this? Uh, his quote unquote management group, um, aka ran by his uncle, I believe. Yeah, per- Prestige Management Group, um, Prestige Management LLC. Uh, yeah, it looks like he, uh, they just said he committed to Rutgers, and it's like a little graphic um, with him as a Rutgers logo. Yeah, so I mean, this was I this was swirling for a few official, days right? now. Um, Let's see, well, you guys can see how the inner workings of how this works. <laughs> yeah, so Prestige Management Group is, like Richie said, um, who represents Tyson Acuff. Um, it's run by or his his agent is his uncle. So you gotta. 
take this for, for what it's worth, but it sounds like Rutgers has officially landed him. And that's what we've been hearing for a few days now. Um, but kind of cool to see it finalized during the pod. I know this isn't great, uh, content for the podcast, but everything that applies, uh, previously that we said about Tyson Acuff, um, applies to how we feel about him. I do think landing between him and Alaco, I think both will play starters amount of minutes if we land Alaco, but, uh, Tyson Acuff is currently, I would imagine, uh, leader in the clubhouse at the moment to be the fifth starter alongside Dylan Harper, Jeremiah Williams, Ace Bailey, and the transfer big man, whoever that ends up being. To be um, determined on that one. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think Tyson Acuff is is a pretty good get. Uh, like I said, score. He's, it's all you really have to say is he's just a scorer. Like he can put the yep. bucket through the hoop and there's people the on. The hoop. Yeah. yeah. There's people that like last year, you saw it too many times. Like you just, it just, they can't score. Like yeah. now, like you're just adding weapon after weapon, after weapon, after weapon. Like this, this has a chance to be something really special and adding guys like this is only going to help things. Yeah. And you could coach up a player to be a better defender because def- half of defense honestly is about intensity and it's about positioning. If you know where you're supposed to be in a in a defense, whether it be, you know, uh, you know how how you should position yourself, not only from like a, because a lot of these concepts aren't like particularly con like um, complicated. Like man to man defense, you know, you've played that your whole life. Zone defense, you played that your whole life. There's variants of both of those, but. It's about getting around screens. It's Definitely about cool. you know hustling. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll talk a little bit more. You could go on mute. Uh, but a lot of these concepts aren't really they don't vary a whole lot. Um, so Pykele has shown he could turn players into elite defenders from good defenders and take guys from average defenders into good defenders and bad defenders into average defenders. So I expect a similar transition for Tyson Acuff, and I think. What we talked about before applies. The kid was playing so many minutes this year. You can't expect him to be the entire offense and to be a good defender. It's just not realistic. Um, The last portal big that we wanted to hit on that we had a specific name for, and I'm I'm saying a specific name for because uh, there's rumors of an international player being looked into. But the last name that I had on here, Julie Donovan uh, said earlier today that he's – considering putting in a prediction for this kid to enter the portal, but he hasn't done it yet. So just a name to keep on the radar is Andrew Carr. He is the big man out of Wake Forest. Rutgers should be pretty aware of who this kid is since they played him the last two years. Andrew Carr is a 6'10", 220-pound, big, um, very well-rounded offensive game. Uh, He's a guy who shot 37% from three this past year on three attempts a game. He also averaged 13 and a half points a game, 6.8 rebounds a game, and 1.5 assists a game uh, on 53% shooting, nine attempts a game uh, from the field. Um, He shot 78% from the line. He averaged one and a half blocks a game. Um, He would be a slam dunk uh, addition. He's also from Westchester, Pennsylvania. That's probably the biggest uh, allure to Rutgers. He's only an hour away from campus. I think he'd be a massive addition. Um, obviously, he's not in the portal yet, but he's a guy I would closely monitor if he does because I think Rutgers, given the familiarity with him, given the need at the position, I think it'd be a no-brainer for Rutgers to at least reach out and try and land this kid. Um, now, Jerry Carino had mentioned a right. international he guy. Technically yet, but... He didn't commit yet? Yeah. it's it sound, Again, it sounds promising. Like Trilly said, nothing's come across um on this end of things but it does sound like there might be like a verbal between player and someone i got it um i don't know how much else i could say (laughs) yeah don't uh don't burn any sources there but anyway um the last big man possibility that we had is potentially having a an international player now yes jerry carino had mentioned that my goal was kind of exhausting all uh, avenues this off season. One of them being an international player. Mm-hmm. I kind of dove headfirst into that and 
thought like, okay, we haven't really gone after international players with much regularity in the past. You know, that Taron Armstrong kid is kind of the exception to that. An international, I say, um, like, you know, we have landed, you know, Cliff, but he, he while he is an international mm. uh, player, he played uh, high school ball in the, in, in the States. And the same yeah. thing for basically everybody else. Like, Watt is not from the United States, but he played at Prolific Prep. He played in the U.S. Now, when did Peichel have an opportunity to have an extended look at international players? Well... He did see the U19 FIBA World Cup this past summer when he was going to see Dylan Harper. And there was a bunch of international players that you obviously would see while you're watching the U.S. play. Now, I don't have any specific names, but I think if anybody wants to do a deep dive, I would look into the rosters of the players that Rutgers uh, commit Dylan Harper played against in the summer. I know that they played, I think they played seven games while they were there. Uh, so there was... Seven other teams they played. I don't have the names of those teams, but that would be the lead I would chase down. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting. Um, before we get too way far off topic, I want to go back to the Chinyelu kid. <clears throat> um, he's interesting for the sole fact. I know you said he had some foul issues. Now, this is where it could work out, where you don't necessarily need an experienced big man. You want an experienced big man, in my opinion, first and foremost. But if you can't get that guy... Chinyalu would make sense because you can kind of split his minutes with Somerville, I feel like. Somerville's going to play a lot this year. Um, now, if you get, like, an experience of Marty Williams, Somerville's probably not playing a lot. Um, yep. You get a Chinyalu, you get a guy that has experience, can play a little bit, maybe play 15 to 20 minutes a game, maybe even more, 25, and then give that other 15 to, to Somerville. And then you have kind of some options. Because Somerville's a, a good passer. He's a good scorer. He's got some. He's got a guard skill set as a big man, so it's like it just makes things a little more interesting when you have a guy like that on the bench. So, just just an idea. Definitely. I mean, we've been hyping uh, Lathan up all off season, so uh, you don't need to convince me that he's a you know going to be a big time uh, contributor this upcoming uh, season, especially if we don't land one of the top portal big men in the country. Um, um. Real quick, country-wise, Turkey, France, Japan, China, Lebanon, Slovenia, and Madagascar. I'm assuming you could probably eliminate like two or three of those right away. I, I'm just, I'm just guessing. I'm assuming based on yep. the score, um, Madagascar doesn't have anyone because they, they they lost 136 to 69. <laughs> but yeah, yep. Um, but the other ones would be interesting. Like Turkey's produced a couple in the past couple years. Uh, China obviously produces. Um, Slovenia. Slovenia has some shooters. France. France isn't Wemby from France? Technically, Wemby is from France. Yep. Uh, yeah, um, there you go. So, I'd, I'd go look at some box scores if I were bored and not doing anything today. Oh, well, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, lots to look into there. The last thing that I have on the schedule here is the McDonald's All American Game is being played tomorrow. Uh, Ace and Dylan are on the West squad. The game is at nine o'clock on ESPN. Today, they're actually having a scrimmage on ESPN U at one o'clock. If yes. you wanted to see them scrimmage, uh, see a little game action. I know that both Ace and Dylan have been getting a ton of hype out of the practices from different outlets. So it'll be interesting to see them on the court. I know that uh, Ace and Cooper Flag are kind of battling it out for the top spot in the class. To see them both on the court at the same time in an actual game setting will be uh, really cool because the last time they played was at uh, Rucker Park this summer, and which was basically just a pickup game. So yeah, sixty to sixty, right? They, had, they each had fifty or sixty points or something like that. Yeah, it was it was a lot of scoring. Yep. Uh, speculation on my part, just because he just entered the portal, Omaha Bilu Bileu Bileu. Yeah, from uh, one of I would number I would say. It. Not, yeah, played on Team USA with uh, Dylan and just entered the portal today, yesterday, one of the days. I'm not holding my breath there, but there is a you never there know. is a connection. Yeah. Hey, we we did the same thing with Armstrong, technically. That's true. So you, you never know. That is but, true. Uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, just wait and see. There's, there's a yeah, lot of names out there. The big this difference is, is <laughs> Armstrong's from New Jersey. Rutgers recruited him out of high school. Yeah, Baloo true. is not. <laughs> and Narcos didn't recruit True, school. very true. But Baloo, fun, <laughs> fun fact, um, if I'm reading this correct, I think he was in Canada before the U.S.? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying. 
Anyway, um, we've taken, uh, we've gone pretty long on this. Yeah. Is there anything we missed out on that you wanted to hit on before you head out? Stop falling for all these these Twitter accounts. I know it's April Fool's, so it makes it worse. But like, there's like these all these rando Twitter guys think they're insiders and they're not. I just have to throw that out there, and it's it's you're just honestly they're just hurting the program. They're not even helping the program. It's making things worse. So don't don't believe any Rutgers Twitter insider or like there's like four of them now. Like it's it's just a new account. And he has thirty followers. This one has a hundred followers. Like just just don't believe him. You see like all the Rutgers fans like tweeting about him now. Um, but yeah, that's all I really got. All right, guys. Well, thanks once again for listening. Uh, this is probably going to be a busy week with football practices mm -hmm. happening multiple times with, uh, you know, a big time visit coming this weekend for basketball and just the portal being the portal things could <clears> happen <throat> and probably will happen. Uh, so stay tuned to your podcast feed, stay tuned to the boards. Cause we will have all the pertinent information about Rucker sports mm -hmm. directly into your veins as soon as they happen. <laughs> so for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Night Report podcast signing off.